Hi guys, welcome back to A Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another econometric struggle. Today I'm going to talk about econometrics as a method slash regression analysis. I'm going to start by talking about a simple linear regression, making sure we've got that concept down. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So the big idea behind econometrics broadly is that often we have observational data. All that means is that we're not getting data from experiments or randomized control trials. It's just data that it was observed about people. But we want to use that data to make causal claims because we want to make policy recommendations really often. Sometimes we'll do more of descriptive work, but really most of the time in econometrics, we're trying to make causal claims and say that something causes something else. And so the way we make these causal claims is econometrics or regression analysis. I talk about a lot of econometric tools in my other videos on causal inference, but this is sort of the background for those regressions that you see in those videos. This is sort of the nitty gritty econometric stuff. And the most basic econometric tool that we have is this regression, is this simple regression. So I'm gonna talk about the intuition first and sort of how we get to this OLS or this ordinary least squares regression. So in a regression, in a super simple regression, what we're trying to do is we've got some outcome and we're trying to figure out how this treatment variable or this independent variable X affects Y or our outcome. So maybe in a really simple example, our treatment is just the number of cats that you own and our outcome or our Y is just gonna be your stress level from like zero to 10 or something. And so what we're gonna say is the impact of X on Y that we measure, we're gonna call that beta, that's gonna be our regression coefficient when we regress Y on X. So if I just continue that example, we've got some observational data here. You've got seven people, we know how many cats they own, we know the reported stress level from zero to 10, we're trying to think about what is the relationship between the number of cats that you own and your stress level. What is that coefficient of regressing y on x? Well, from these numbers, if we assume that we've got a linear relationship that between y and x, then what we're gonna have is we can draw a line that relates the number of cats to your stress level based on these points. And if I were to draw this line, if I had to draw one line, I might draw a line something like this. And you can see based on this line, that we don't go through any of these points, but we're sort of in between the line of Bill, Diana, Missy, and Cassie, and the line of Evan, Aaron, and Hank. We're sort of splitting the difference between all of those points to get this line here. And I'll talk exactly about why we draw the line this way in a second. But for now, this is called an ordinary least squares line, and this is what we got. Now, if we're assuming it's linear, then we could write an equation something like this, where we could say that your stress level is some intercept or some common number to any row in alpha, plus our regression coefficient times the number of cats that you own, where of course, this is going to be your intercept right here, this is gonna be alpha, and the slope of this line is going to be beta, and that is how we can get some sort of predicted value for based on the number of cats you own, what we would expect your stress level to be. So let me talk a little bit about how to get these coefficients mathematically, then I'll talk about why we draw the line this way and how exactly we choose the fact that this red line is drawn in this way. So all we're gonna do for beta is we're just gonna calculate it as the covariance between y and x divided by the variance in x, which if you use sigma notation that I talked about in our last video, that's what you're gonna get for a simple linear regression. And then alpha is just your average y minus this coefficient times x bar or the average variable in x. And that's how you get this line right here. Now, in order to talk about why we drew the line this way, we need to add an additional sort of feature to this graph. And that additional sort of feature is gonna be this residual or the error in prediction or epsilon i. Now, when I drew this line, I'm gonna have all these red dots at exactly the number of cats that each of these people have. So for example, for a Diana, Diana has, I don't know, three cats. And so based on this line, I would expect her stress level to be here. Now, her stress level isn't actually here, that's just her predicted stress level based on my regression of the number of cats. Her actual stress level is up here. And so what's happening is we sort of didn't predict this exactly right. There's an error in our prediction, and that error in the prediction is gonna be our residual, which is this difference right here. Now, because we're doing an OLS, or an ordinary least squares regression, that means what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize the squared error. So if I think about the sum of all the errors in prediction, where I square each error in prediction, that gives me sort of the sum of squared errors or the SSE. And now what I'm trying to do is I wanna draw this line in a way such that I minimize the sum of squared errors. And so that's how I drew it. The reason why I'm gonna square these errors is because here I under predict Bill's stress level, 
but I over predict Evan's stress level. And by squaring it, what I want to say is I want to weight both an over prediction and an under prediction the same exact way. I don't want to, let's say, an over prediction sort of balance out or cancel out an under prediction because that's not quite right. And so instead, I just square them because that's fine. I can do that. I could also do an absolute value thing. It would be probably a slightly different line, but I was going to square them. That's ordinary least squares, and that's how I get to this line. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the five assumptions that we need for a linear regression. They're called the Gaspar-Markov assumptions. I'm going to talk about them sort of intuitively. I'll talk about them again later with some more algebra as we keep going. But if this video or these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.